Good morning, magandang humaga, and welcome to today's episode of My PI Dream. Today is Monday, and it is bill day 204. Yes, bill day 204 on the bill schedule out at Villa Feliz. Today, all the crew should be back on site today. So we should have, mm, I'm thinking, between 10 and 12 people uh, working, uh, trying to move us forward to get in completion of this project. We should also have the roofing team today out there. And I'm hoping we have the stainless steel team. It's been dry enough. We had no rain overnight. Uh, yesterday was a beautiful day. Unfortunately, we didn't have anybody on the build site except for three workers out there. And they were working inside the basement. Hence, we did not have a full episode yesterday. Uh, but look at the skies this morning. Even though we have uh, some partial clouds, it just feels good today. Yeah, the, the temperature is great this morning. It feels dry. And uh, I just hope it continues throughout today and we have one full day. If we have one full day and our roofing team is there, we can have almost the entire top of our house covered. Mm. Maybe that's too much wishful thinking, but uh, I'm optimistic. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead and get today started. So without further delay, let's get today's video underway. What's all this noise out here? Morning. Wow, stereo this morning. How are you, Juliana? How are you, sweetheart? <laughs> oh, I saw you dancing from down the street. <laughs> Good morning. Uh, what is it? Is it? Is it? Is it fiesta today? No, there's a parade. But there's a parade. Yeah. Oh, what? The no. one who won Miss Jewel of the Philippines. Ah, Miss Jewel of the Philippines. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, I. Well, I wanted to go into work, but I want to. Are they going this way or going that way? Yes. This way. Oh, well, well, I have to. Oh, what a pleasant surprise. I'm, I'm going to have to... Good morning. Good morning. Hello, Puyagay. Good morning. How are you today? Hi, Puyagay. Hi, I say, hey, Mark. Hi, Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? What I'm gonna do, I have to get into work, but this is a big event. I didn't realize nobody told me about this. This is Miss Jewel. And I guess Miss Jewel is like a big thing. It's like a like a beauty pageant kind of a winner. Uh, and like the next step is like the competition for Miss Universe. Right now, so I'm gonna see if I can get a quick glimpse of Miss Jewel Philippines. Good morning. How are you today? Good morning. I want to get a I, I want to get a picture of Miss Jewel. You think I can get a picture? They're coming. They're coming. Yeah. They're coming this way. Ah. Uh, uh, they. Ah. Uh, okay. Friend. Good morning. This is so confusing. I want to get a picture of the poster. Even the live person, you can see. You can see. I know she's on the float now. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. try to get a picture of yeah. her. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks. <laughs> and she's 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 and she's from here. She's from here. You learn, you learn so much just going out and talking with people in the community. 
Uh, I did not realize that Miss Jewel, Ashel Joy Madrano, this is her home right here, which is this, this is right down this block from me. It's maybe 200 meters from my apartment. This is crazy. Morning, ladies. Uh, uh, and, hi, Ronnie. Good morning. And and this is Miss Jewel. Miss Jewel is going to be riding on the right right through here. When it, when is she starting? Uh, she's starting um, just right away after she finishes her makeup. Ah, uh, finishes her makeup. Oh, <laughs> of course, Miss Miss Jewel must prepare with her makeup. Uh, <laughs> For the big day. Okay. Well, I'm hoping to get a glimpse. Maybe I get a, get a picture with yeah, her. Sure. So anyway, we're going to try to get a sneak glimpse of Miss Jewel as she's leaving her ass. This is her home. Uh, <laughs> like I said, she, she lives maybe 200 meters from my apartment down here. So this is crazy. I just want to get a picture. All right, I'm being invited into the home of Miss Jewel. Miss <laughs> Jewel. She's the handler of uh, the jewel. Ah, uh, it's a pleasure to meet you.
Morning, Emma. Morning. Uh, Emma, do you know the story behind, or either one, do you know the story behind the Miss Jewel, the whole story, the competition, and understand how no, it... No, uh, I heard it on the... <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, guys. Ah, did you see Miss Jewel? Did you see... Ah, she's so cool. Good morning, Jai. Good morning. How are you today? Maybe, maybe, maybe she'll be the next Miss Jewel. But not with that face. You have to have a smile. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> She's not, she's not happy. She doesn't like somebody else getting the attention today. And wonderful surprises like that every single day around the corner are what makes the Philippines so very special. And what day would be complete without a birthday or an anniversary shout out? And today's no exception. Today's first birthday shout out goes to the daughter, the first daughter of Dennis Saliz. And his daughter's name is Princess Dion, and this is her first birthday, and it's a big birthday. <laughs> it's a big birthday, the first, the very first, and the first daughter. So anyway, uh, Princess Dion, happy birthday, and I know your father is a proud man. And another birthday shout out goes to Douglas Hill's daughter, Freya. Uh, she, this is October 16th, and she is turning 13 today, the first of the teen years. Watch out, Douglas. Anyway, happy birthday, Freya. I think I think we went with a bigger we, uh, with a bigger conduit for the uh, Cat Six cables. I think we were getting too tight with the amount that we had, and that was part of uh, preparation and planning. If you know, and we haven't changed, I, I think we added one more. Uh, but if you really haven't changed the amount of uh, and the scope of your network infrastructure and utility infrastructure, you have to take that into consideration when you're planning the sizes of all your conduit, uh, your pipes that will give you access inside there. Uh, I've seen them struggling with some of the pipes trying to get it, uh, pull, do the pull with the GI wire and stuff like that, and you don't want that. You would rather have a little bit of expandability uh, later on if you want to add something than to be something too tight, because once it's all up and, and it's very difficult to uh, add or implement new uh, cables and wires later on if the pipes are too small. Good morning. Good morning. Ah, you have a bigger pipe in there now, right? Yeah, I see that. Bigger pipe. Bigger pipe. We need. So what?
what we're doing here is we're draining out the cistern. Uh, the cistern is going to be waterproof, so they have to get all the water. And that was the water that got inside of the, the cistern before we had the slab on from the normal rains. And it was quite a bit. Uh, the worker went down and he measured it. And when he said how much, he said it was up to his chest uh, when he was inside of there. Uh, so we'll, uh, we're evacuating that using the sump pump from our sump in the basement. And once that gets evacuated and it's dried out, we'll do the proper waterproofing. So what you see me doing here is I'm coating the stainless steel sink uh, with wax. And you can use any wax, I use car wax. Uh, but if it's gonna be exposed and it's not ready for uh, deployment, like during the construction phase here, what you're gonna get, you're gonna get something like concrete residue or something like that and it's gonna fall inside the sink and it's gonna damage your nice stainless steel sink. So do a couple of things, if you coat it with the wax and you don't wipe the wax off, you leave the wax on there, it's not gonna hurt anything it'll act like a preservative and then when you're ready to use the sink later on when the construction is complete you just wipe it down with a with a cloth and you get all that wax off then you cover it and what I have is uh, the cut up of the granite slab right here and I'll sit that on the top and we'll make sure that nothing else goes inside the sink during the rest of the construction phase or anything that falls and dents it as well well I was just about to go and grab a bite to eat down at my favorite Lomi shop and uh, I, I passed the vehicle with the security guard escorting them in and it's our 799 folks who are the people who are doing our doors for the CRs, for the, the three CRs that we have here. I think they're gonna be doing some measurements and things like that. So I'm back here, I'll just go to lunch just a little bit late and uh, we'll just make sure that we have the appropriate stuff that's done. And I have some other questions for them as well. How are you today? Good morning, good morning, good morning. I'm Felix. Felix. Felix, Felix, yeah. and Yan Yan. 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 Felix and Yan Yan. So, anyway, I have Felix and Yan Yan here from uh, 799. 799. And, and these these are the folks. And what are you going to do for me today? We're measuring your doors. You're measuring doors. So, yeah. we make sure that they fit exactly right, yeah. correctly. Are they beautiful doors I picked? Yeah. You, <laughs> you're going to say, yeah, no matter what, right? <laughs> All right, well, please come visit okay, and uh, okay. we'll go ahead and get this thing. Now it's not very short, it's super too deep. The box is supposed to butt when they mount it.
So you, you remember we talked about anchoring the retaining wall uh, on, on this side over here. Uh, we talked about that last week. And we're going to use a hook. We're going to use a hook anchor from the footers uh, over here, over here, and over there. The, these three uh, posts with the footer. And we're going to run it out and down here over it. Then we'll cover it up. And we'll cover up the, the anchor itself with concrete so it doesn't get any water to deteriorate or cause any corrosion to the rebar. Now over here, we have a special condition for, for anchoring. And the anchoring itself is going to be the footer of the support for the stairway. So you see right here, this is a footer and that's a footer over there. They are going to be embedded into the retaining wall. And it's a small retaining wall anyway. Uh, and it's gonna be very little pressure because that's all the soil that we have on it back there. But it doesn't matter, they all still, anchor, your retaining wall should always be anchored some way. Uh, but that's the method we're gonna use for this part of the driveway. So our oversight catch of the day. I haven't been up on the second floor. I've been doing and focusing most of the stuff on the basement and the first floor and the driveway, stuff like that. So I walked up here because I want to look at some stuff on the roofing, some of the roofing stuff that's getting, being done. And I noticed we have some chalk lines inside here. And I'm like, why do we have these chalk lines up here? It doesn't make any sense to me. What are they for? And I kind of knew what they were for. But the original request that I put with my builder was, the, the vaulted ceilings and the cathedral ceilings that we're having inside the stairwell for the ceiling portion right here starts at the bottom of the truss and goes up to the top. It will go up, over a little bit, and back down. So we maximize the most amount of height. Well, what that involves is if they do that, they have to put some concrete hollow blocks. They have to enclose this area in around this point right here because it's not high enough to reach it. Uh, it has to be closed up. Uh, so uh, what they ended up doing there, they made a decision for me. They said, oh, it, it's much easier to drop the ceiling down by 14 inches on this side right here instead of doing the extra work to doing the concrete hollow block. I looked, I said, no, we're going we're gonna to do the additional concrete hollow block. We're going to do it right the way we originally designed it. And uh, so they're going to have to, they're going to have to fix this area. We're going to have to fill that in with concrete to the base of the lowest point of whatever, whichever the lowest point of the truss is. Uh, which is probably going to be this one or that one in the corner over there and once they get it to that height right there and they fill that in and they're going to have to finish it and then we'll do all of the the roofing tinsmith uh, for the ceiling uh, plasterboard at that point right there uh, so that's my catch for today if I wasn't here I would have been really disappointed uh, look at the uh, walk-in closet right here uh, we're starting to get a finished uh, I, I didn't even see them start on this um, the walls are looking really good inside of here. And, here. and here's a tip of the day, and I brought this up in one of the previous episodes, but I want to bring it up now. So you saw when we were doing the barbecue grill and my electrician is setting up the box for the outdoor waterproof uh, uh, outlet that has the screw on there. It has seals, and we're going to do some um, sealant around the back of it when we mount it on there. But you heard him say, oh, the screws aren't long enough. And you heard me say, well, it's not that the screws aren't long enough. It's that the, the, uh, the box, the receptacle box was installed improperly. They had it too deep. In the U.S., it's so very easy to uh, establish the depth of your uh, receptacle box inside there because you, we use wood. You have a two by four, and then all you have to do is you have to do one calculation on top of the two by four for your studs in your wall, and you add the thickness of your plasterboard that you're gonna have, which is gonna be your um, sheetrock that you're gonna put for your walls. And usually that's gonna be like 3 eighths or half inch or 5 eighths. Uh, it depends on the size that you're using inside your house. You just add that on and then you move your receptacle box out to that when you mount it to your studs uh, for new construction. Uh, here, they have to do the same thing, but they have to calculate in how much plaster, concrete plaster are they gonna put on top of the concrete hollow box and it's very hard sometimes for them to de determine that. The, and it's supposed to be the same, but it's not because when you do the concrete hollow blocks, uh, all the wall is not perfectly straight because they, they never get a perfectly straight uh, concrete hollow block installed. So some places might be about that much and some places might be about this much inside there. Uh, case in point is like this right here. You see here, here's the box and here is the, the additional uh, plaster that's on the outside of it. Then you're going to get some that are almost, that are almost perfect, like, 
like this one right here. You see, this is perfect. This was ca the calculated. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna say it's calculated. I'm gonna say it was just a mistake that they got it correct. Um, but the thing is, it has to do with uh, preparation. And w if you're monitoring your build and your electrician is setting up the outlets inside the house, uh, half them calculate for whatever they think that the amount of uh, plaster is inside there for every single one of yours. The one down by the grill. I think we have about like that much thickness inside there. So what that means is they have to have an extent, instead of the screw that came with uh, the, the cover or the, uh, the electrical uh, outlet that's gonna be installed inside there, you're gonna have to go down to the hardware store and get one that's like two or three times the size of the original one. And it'll work and you have a deeper hole inside there. But the whole purpose behind it is you want everything enclosed in this for safety. This box should be uh, it should be one enclosure for your electrical um, tip of the day. Well, it's the end of the workday, and we actually had more stuff accomplished today uh, than we did the last few days being on the, the small crew that we had. We still don't have the full crew. We're still missing two or three people, and uh, I think they might be back tomorrow. I don't know. I, uh, that's, I asked my builder, I said, this doesn't seem like the whole crew. He's like, no, we, we still have a couple of them that haven't showed up. So hopefully they're here tomorrow. We have a full crew. Again, I set the priority. I asked him again to set the priority for the drainage, to get the basement dried and pull these people off for these other jobs. But one of the parts of the uh, the drying in for the basement is also what they're doing over there. You see, they pulled. You see all that lumber over there, all of that lumber, <laughs> all that cocoa wood and plywood. That's from inside. That's from the formworks and the scaffolding and everything that was inside the cistern. They removed that today, and we're trying to get the uh, the cistern dried out so that we can waterproof it. So we moved forward on that. Uh, obviously, we moved forward on roofing tiles. Uh, so we have a lot more roofing tiles on the roof. Uh, and I was way too optimistic when I said I thought they would get most of them done today. They didn't get most of them done today. I think it's a five-day process. And I think we're on day, maybe day three today. So I think we have at least a couple more days. Uh, maybe, maybe three, I might even say. Uh, the stainless steel guys didn't come out today. He asked them, uh, they, he called them and he said they will come out tomorrow. We'll see about that. It's starting to rain now and I don't have my big umbrella. I just have my small umbrella. Uh, I don't think there was a lot of stuff that was done inside the basement. Mm, some sanding of some of the ceiling fixtures that they're gonna be using. And I was wrong. I was incorrect the other day when I said those special features, uh, the boxes that they were doing were for the basement, that area in the basement where they were working on them. They're not for there. They are for Mm, the, fir the first floor, I think, for the, uh, the the dining room and I think inside the kitchen, but they're not for those areas. So I was incorrect there. You see, today we had some retaining walls that were being worked on. So we had the retaining walls, we had the roofing, and we had a little bit of grill work that was done today, and we had some electrical work by electricians. And it's starting to rain on me right now. So anyway, let me close for today. Today was a good day. It started out as a fun day with the parade, and then we had more people on the crew, and uh, so we moved forward. It's a positive day today, and I hope tomorrow is another positive day. And you see, it's raining now. It's at the end of the workday, so it didn't impede us at all here. So if it rains a little bit, and it'll be a little bit drier inside because we have more roofing tiles, so we got to look uh, at the positive side of everything. So I'm going to close for now. Uh, get home, get something to eat, get this edited, and get it uploaded to you. So if you enjoyed today's video, please give me a thumbs up. Please share, and if you uh, have not subscribed, just click on that little My PI Dream heart in the bottom right hand side of your screen. You will be subscribed, and you will be notified each time I upload a new video. So until tomorrow, which is going to be Tuesday, and it's going to be build day 205 out here on the construction schedule out at Villa Feliz. You have a wonderful and blessed day.